everyone. Welcome to the Rotor Grinders Morning Grind Podcast. I'm your host, Stevie TPFL. It's Monday. It's March 25th. It is 2024. We have a nine-game NBA slate to talk about here on today's podcast. Joined, as always, on Mondays, my good buddy, Will Priester, Chief Justice 06. Chief, what's happening, my friend? Nothing much, man. I must say, uh, what I did, I, we, I talked about it a little bit pre-show. I dropped it in the Discord. Um, I didn't ship today, but it has to be, in my opinion, one of the most incredible caches of all time. And I, I played all GPP stuff too, Steve. So this is why I didn't play the cash games. All GPP, some single entry, a little bit of MME. Uh, I just ran one lineup, but I, so I didn't have time to MME this week. So I just kind of followed the blue, the Stevie blueprint in a NASCAR premium. Had a guy with negative 10. McDowell wasn't his fault. Had a car issue. Even still, Stevie, everything else was so spot on. I still made money today. That's the power of NASCAR. I got a negative 10 from a driver. I wasn't supposed to cash today, right? Like le- legitimately, but I did. Uh, shout out to NASCAR Premium. Did, and then not to overlook, I've been on a pretty good run with NBA, Stevie. And uh, I think it's going to end today. No, no, you know, so I think it's going to end today. Because D'Angelo Russell got ruled out late, and that's why that's why I hate these these big gaps in between a seven or eight o'clock game and a ten o'clock game because nobody knew he was going to get ruled out. I was able to swap, you know. So, but I would have had a totally different lineup construction had we got that earlier in the day. This is the power of cutting off those stupid ten o'clock games where you got a two and a half hour gap. So much can happen. And just really screw up how you would approach the slate. Anyway, other than that, I know I hogged the mic early on the front end. Hopefully, I will shorten up my soliloquies in the middle. Glad to come on with you to bring in another Monday. Oh, no, man. Heck, yeah. It's um, NASCAR was interesting. A lot of people didn't like the race. I actually liked it. I thought for a road course race, it was great. I mean, the fast cars went to the front. The stage cautions brought all kinds of different strategies, but I thought the racing overall was really solid. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it was a overall it was a pretty interesting day for the NASCAR streets, and um, yeah, just excited to, I mean, just keep going. I, I feel like it's great. So I thought it was a good race. I thought the road course racing was good. Last year we had a lot of snooze fests and like there was a lot of passing. If you had a fast car, you could pass. Um, and we didn't see that a lot last year. So, um, I mean, I think it was a positive for the new package that we tried this weekend at the road course. So, um, we'll see how it works out throughout the season back to a short flat this weekend and short flats have been fantastic. So Easter Sunday night, we got a race this weekend. I'm excited for that. So, uh, we'll be recording the Monday podcast next week here while watching the end of the race so that'd be fun um and adds to the sweat there so excited for that but uh what's up youtube hope you're having a fantastic sunday night enjoying some college hoops march madness has been madness uh we had a massive run over there in the squad rides channel hopefully you're in that one over there on discord so uh, just absolutely an insane uh, run that we had going on there. I think it was eight or nine in a row um, over like a two day period. He had a he had a quadruple hit. Um, so uh, it was just it was so much fun and March Madness um, just has added to the squad ride. So make sure you guys are over there on Discord. Ah, uh, yeah, basketball excited. Baseball week opening day on Thursday. So we're going to be switching over to baseball at least Thursday and Friday of this week. And if there's short slates for baseball, I haven't fully done the schedule yet for April uh, for NBA and MLB. If there's short slates for MLB, we'll probably do NBA. But the main focus as of Thursday for the morning grind is going to be baseball. Um, the, The news is so much easier to navigate and, I mean, I might be biased, but I think we have one of the best baseball shows and podcasting industry. So um, take advantage of that. Got a lot of fun stuff planned for this year's baseball season. So uh, let's talk some hoops. We got basketball back in the NBA streets. Like you said, you, you've been having a good run in NBA. My betting for NBA was on point last week. Had a great week in betting. Um, so excited to hopefully keep that rolling here. We get started with Charlotte at Cleveland, 205 total. Cleveland, a 12 and a half point favorite. They aren't a back-to-back. 
On the Charlotte side, Curry, Barton, Ball, McGowan's, Williams still out. On the Cleveland side, it does not sound like Mitchell will be back for this game. Um, Struess is getting close. We'll see if he's back. Wade is getting close. We'll see if he's back. Um, so paying attention to that news here. And if anybody else gets ruled out for Cleveland throughout the day. Let's go Charlotte here first. What do you like here for your Hornets? Not much. Maybe Nick Richards, maybe a flyer on Poku. But we got a fairly robust slate today. May not need Poku. Not really interested too much. I know Cleveland's on a back-to-back. They got pretty much stomped by Miami in the previous slate, Stevie. So this is, it's like they played a half a game. I, I don't I don't I don't think Charlotte has a chance here. So I'm not really interested in the Hornets today. Yeah, so uh, as I was doing my research for the pod today, I just noticed something that I thought was super interesting. And Cleveland over the last 10 games is the second worst rebounding team in the NBA. Super sneaky stat. Um, And I think that Richards actually kind of stands out to me here. He's kind of in that like weird price range. I don't think a lot of people will be looking at Nick Richards here. So I think this is an excellent rebounding spot for him. His rebounding prop isn't up yet, but it's definitely one that I have written down to check out um, in the morning. I'm assuming it comes in at eight and a half. He's, he's I'll probably going to get a tick down for Cleveland yeah. and, and nine and a half on the high. It won't be ten and a half for sure. Yeah, I think I think if it's eight and a half, I'll take the over. Um, he's already he's hit that in three of his last four games. They've been awful rebounding, so um, and his minutes are pretty secure in the spot. So yeah, I mean if he comes in at eight and a half, I like the over on that one. But outside of Richards, I don't really have a ton of interest in Charlotte. Um, Michich's price is caught up. I don't think I want to play him. And then on the Cleveland side, I mean, assuming that like Mitchell, Struess, and Wade are out, I don't mind like this spot for like a Levert if you just are like going for like a ceiling spot. Allen could crush in this spot. I, I mean, yeah, Cleveland's been struggling rebounding, but I mean, Charlotte's still one of the worst rebounding teams in the NBA. So, I mean, Allen could smash here. What do you like for the Cavs? I think, Steve, it depends on whether or not they actually rest Evan Mobley. He did play um, on Sunday. Play, I think he was on a minute limit for about 20 minutes. Roughly. Yeah, I assume they would sit him on the back-to-back, but I could be wrong. Yeah, that, that's what I'm thinking, too. If, if they for sure sit him, Stevie – the Levert and, and Allen, top tier plays today, no doubt about it. Like they, I mean, Levert with no Mobley, no Mitchell, and the way these guys have been flowing, which I know you know, but the way he's been flowing recently, he's been one of the highest upside plays on this team, even more upside than than uh, Garland. So I, I like Levert quite a bit. I'm a little bit cheaper than Garland, as well at 7,400, and then we'll get uh, Allen. And once again, Allen without Mobley is a totally different. DFS play, so 8,200 I'm in versus the Hornets. Yeah. Um, I uh, Okay, in my my head, I assumed that Mobley would sit on the second and the back-to-back coming back after missing a few weeks. But, I mean, even if he does play, I don't expect him to play enough minutes. And if that lowers the ownership on Allen, I mean, it just bumps my thought process up here. So, All right, Brooklyn at Toronto, 215 total. Brooklyn, a five-point favorite. Bates, Diop, Cam Johnson, Simmons, and DSJ out for Brooklyn. Barnes, RJ, Boucher, Carton, Podol, Porter, quickly out for Toronto. Uh, Another team that has been awful rebounding the basketball, Toronto. I mean, they've been awful at everything. They are just playing really bad basketball right now. I think if you look at... The last 10 games, they're like minus 15 and a half point differential. Um, they're just getting crushed. What do we like here for Brooklyn? Yeah, Brooklyn is an interesting spot because this matchup with Toronto. I think, but they ha- they still have a fair amount of players, but they're all in the mid-range. Like you could play Schroeder here, Steve. He could have a good game. You could play Cam Thomas, you could play Mikael Bridges. I definitely think uh you could uh take a shot on Dorian Finney Smith in this spot. Like you know, I, th- I think the minutes will be there. I think you can play uh, Claxton, but I, but I don't think you can play them all together. I wouldn't play more than two, Stevie. Uh, Brooklyn guys, just because of, uh, let's call it their style of play, but uh, I think one of these mid-range guys, Claxton, uh, Bridges, Cam- uh, Thomas, Schroeder, one or two of these guys I think get there, Stevie, and so I'm more than willing to put them in a group and go maybe one, one no more than two 
and then, you know, take a shot on some of these cheapies, mainly Dory Finney Smith and um and uh and Lonnie Walker, maybe. Uh, I know I know his minutes haven't been there, but they could absolutely be there in this spot. So uh, I just I like them. I just don't like their style of play. But I think one, at least one of these mid-range guys gets there for, for, for some ceiling. I think Claxton has a big game. He hasn't had a big game in a while. Toronto has just been awful um, against bigs. I, I think Black, Black Claxton is a guy, like, his stock upside is, you know, his rebounding upside, everything in this spot just seems like a really good spot for Claxton. So I think Claxton, like, I, I was looking at his props before we got started because I love the matchup. And, like, his he's at 10.5 at, like, minus 140 or something rebounds. And his stocks is, like, minus 160 for over 2.5. So, like, the books are in the line, pro like, thought process with me here. No Cam Johnson is going to be a nice little bump to Claxton just overall. So, yeah, I, I think Claxton is my favorite play from Brooklyn today. Bridges, always a, a ceiling play in this type of spot. You could see him have a big game. And, and, I mean, Cam Thomas, I think, is another guy. Like, I don't know how much Bridges and, and Thomas I'd play together, but with Johnson out, that opens up a few extra stats here for Brooklyn. So, um, I just – I really like the spot for Claxton. Half the Toronto team still out. Anything here on the Toronto side? Uh, I mean, not not a whole lot, Stevie. Like, I know Olenek had um, – a relatively upside game against Washington. That was Washington. The difference is, you know, with John T. Porter being, I don't let may have to play these minutes, but he's still priced up. Agbaji has been playing really well. Stevie putting together some nice performances at 5,100. He's close for me um, because he's playing 30 plus minutes. But and so, I mean, with all these guys out, he, I definitely think Agbaji, even though, he absolutely, Stevie, uh, put up some duds in between a lot of these things. With a lot of these guys being out, he's been thrust more into the starting role. I think I like him a little bit more than Grady Private Parks. Bruce Brown at 6,200, I think it's – I don't think I'm going to play Bruce Brown today. I think I'm done with the Bruce Brown experiment with the bad Toronto <laughs> team. I think those are the only guys I want to play. Yeah. Um, I mean, Trent, he's going to get his shots up. Um I, I hate the idea of even thinking about playing Gary Trent. Um, he's going to shoot a lot. His usage Against has been Washington, really nice. I, I knew he was going to have a good game. It was Washington. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, Kelly Olenek, you, you know, you're, you're like the prize picks guy. Kelly Olenek continues to come in at a projection of seven and a half rebounds, and we just keep pounding the less than. Um, he also I, I, throwing at five and a half assists, and I keep taking under that too. <laughs> yeah, it's so interesting. The books, the books have met six and a half rebounds, and I still think you could potentially take that. But um, the projection for prize picks has continued to be like seven and a half projection and less than that. Um, I can't play prize picks in Florida anymore, or I can't even look at the board. Um, but yeah, I think if that that continues to be a thing, I think uh, Toronto is just an awful team overall right now. Um, yeah. I like the Abaji call. I think that. Even in a blowout, they'll try to get him his 30 plus minutes, kind of keep seeing what they have in the young player. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> excuse me. Outside of that, I don't think I want to play anybody else here. I, I we should note at least note it that like Freeman Liberty has been playing 20 plus minutes over the last few games. Um, he's really cheap at 3,900, but I don't think you could trust that to be a thing. Boston at Atlanta, 227 and a half total here at Boston, an 11 point favorite. Drew out, Tillman and White questionable. On the Atlanta side, Bay, Buffkin, Griffin, Johnson, Okongwu, and Trey out. So let's go Boston here first. I think this is going to be a spot Drew and Derek White both sit. Um, obviously, Drew's already been ruled out for this game. Derek White questionable with the with a hand sprain um whatever they can give them injury wise uh to get them some rest days down the stretch right boston's just in a fantastic spot playoff wise they're going to be resting people if we do get the news that white is going to sit with drew as much as i like brown and tatum pritchard at 5600 becomes 
the guy that's going to play a bunch of minutes with the ball in his hand, and we've just been playing Pritchard. They've raised him up a little bit. Like, he's not 4,800 again, but, I mean, this is a spot against Atlanta. Pritchard at 5,600. I think, like, Pritchard is just loving the extra playing time, and he's been taking advantage of it for sure. Yeah, Stevie, I think I've played Pritchard every slate for the past four or five. It's somewhere up in there. Like, I, I legitimately played him every slate. Um, so I, I'm with you on the Pritchard call. And I do think, Stevie, I feel I feel 100% confident Derek White sits today. Here's why. All these other starters have been sitting on these back-to-backs randomly. He's continued to play, and now it's his chance. I think he sits. I, I, I don't. I, I am not anticipating he's going to see the floor tomorrow, Stevie. Not with Porzingis back, Horford back. Brown back, Tatum back, back. I don't think he plays. Um, but that's also going to open it up for Sam Hauser. He's 5,600. He had himself a game against Chicago. The difference is Pritchard's going to have the ball in his hands a little bit more. So uh, I don't know how much Hauser's on FanDuel. I didn't look at that pricing. But um, Hauser may be, just be okay. But Pritchard, I, I for sure take Pritchard over him. Um, it's a matchup with Atlanta. I don't think I want to play Tatum at 10K. Uh, I don't think I want to play Brown at 8,700, but I do still want to play Pritchard. All right, YouTube chat. Um, really quick before we go to the Atlanta side, I just got Yale at plus 11 and a half. I was on Yale already in this game. I think I can't even remember what the line was. I think it was five and a half or six and a half. Um, they, they, San Diego State just came out and like scored 12 or 11 points, 13 points, like right off the bat. I think Yale calms down after this TV timeout, and we get Yale going a little bit here. Uh, jumping on Yale live at ten and, or eleven and a half. Uh, God, Will you, so today? You people have been in a preview or a review of last year's <laughs> Nashville sit down. This was all day, but I, I'm not going to uh, get into it. We missed out on that this year. So much uh, fun! Yeah. I can't talk about how much fun that was. All day. It was. It was me, me, Noto, and Chief, and it was all day. Before, like, it was before lunch even started. We yeah. hadn't had lunch together. We we hung out all day and just live bet college basketball. Um, and I think the most first profitable, one was like Auburn or, or or Alabama. It was one of those two. It was Alabama. Auburn. Yeah, we were sitting at that barbecue early, place, and we yep. said, "Nah, they're not losing this game." <laughs> yeah, we all looked at each other, and that turned into like this thing of just live betting all day um it wasn't even planned it just happened um yeah so amazing it amazing. was it was fantastic it was good times um i will say though so during the nascar race today um bowman was driving through the field and like had one of the best cars and i got him at 50 to 1 live and i felt so good about it he came out of the pit second at the last stint i was like oh man actually this has a chance i bet it at 50 to 1 and it instantly went to 20 to 1 um instantly it was 20 to 5 25 to 1 on some books so instantly on the hard rock went to 20 to 1 they're like nah can't let you have any more of this um felt good about that one didn't work out but i felt really good about it all right atlanta side of this game uh tough spot against boston what are our thoughts here on the hawks um i mean Boston has been so smothered. Now we saw against Chicago when they're down a couple pieces. Stevie, you, you, if you, if you have reasonable talent, you can hang around. Most of the starters are back this game. Um, Bruno Fernando might actually still be okay, Stevie, just because of the situation. Like this game could get out of hand, and he could just get some minutes down the stretch. Um, but generally, generally for Atlanta, I, I don't really want to play any of these guys. I'm. I'm perfectly fine, fine leaving him on the shelf. Yeah, I mean, Capella has actually been playing pretty solid recently, but his minutes are still, like, his ceiling is still capped because of his minutes. Um, so, I mean, he's, like, the one guy that I'd, I would have some remote interest in. Um, DeJounte Murray, for what it's worth, ha- has been playing fantastic. And if Drew and White are going to miss this game, could be a bump for DeJounte. But, I mean, they could always throw Jalen Brown on him, I guess. So, he's 9,800. He's expensive. Like, if you're playing Brown or Tatum on the other side and you want to run it back with DeJounte, I wouldn't talk you off of it. Uh, Detroit at New York, 
facing the Knicks, 206 and a half. Knicks are 16, 16 and a half point favorites in this one. It's back to back for Detroit. OG, Randall, Mitch Robb still out for New York. Um, so, okay, Cade Cunningham sat Sunday. It was injury management. We'll see if he's back or not here. Um, Jalen Duren sat on Sunday back spasms. I don't know. Maybe they were just kind of giving him a day off. Um, I think he sat in the game before that too, Stevie. Yeah, I mean, yeah. so we'll we'll see what kind of happens here with Duren. Wiseman got the start. Metu, he played 39 minutes on Sunday. We talked about him a little bit last week. I think it was on the Friday slate. He kind of dudded um, on that one. But, I mean, if Duran ends up sitting again, as much as I like Wiseman, I think Wiseman's a great you know tournament play as well. Metu at 4,100 would be fantastic. We'll have to kind of see what happens with Fontecchio, too. He missed the game on Sunday. T- terrible spot, terrible spot. Slow pace game. Nick's a, a solid defense. Uh, anything here on the Detroit side that you like? Um, not unless a lot of these guys sit, Stevie. Like if Cage back, if Fontecchio happens to come back, um, Fontecchio Fontecchio is probably getting close to being just shut down, Stevie. Because I mean, he's missed I think what four or five games now, six games, something like that. So it's almost to the point where they just rule him out, but. Um, I think I only want to play Detroit if we get some real value here with these guys sitting. Like you talked about that too. If Duran sits and Cade sits and get like he's going to become real value. Like 41, it's real value. Um, and I, I think that's the only way I get to Detroit. If, if most of these big names like Duran and Cunningham suit up, I'm not interested in the Pistons against the Knicks. Yeah, if everybody plays them out, um, I, I'm with you. I need people to be out for me to start playing them and. As far as like the Knicks are, are concerned here, they, I mean, they should handle this game. Um, I don't have a ton of interest in New York here. Yeah. I mean, Jalen Brunson, if this game stays close, smashes. I mean, so in large field tournaments, if you're building the, hey, this game stays close build, definitely play some Brunson. I mean, there's no reason not to play Brunson if you don't think this game's going to be a blowout. Uh, anything else here on the Knicks side, Will? All right. <laughs> Negative. I was trying to unmute myself. I, I'm, I'm I'm trying to make sure everybody is taking the under on my, my half mute today that they win their prize money. So uh, that's that's what happened. I wasn't pointing it out. I was on team under today. Um, so <laughs> Bouncing back from a sick day. I thought you were going to be on top of it. Um Phoenix at San Antonio, 232 and a half total. Phoenix, a 12 point favorite. Lee out. Wimby, questionable. Let's go, Phoenix here first. What do we like here for the Suns? Oh, the line, according to Derek, was one and a half. Ah, so we're still under. Fantastic, Derek. Uh, I'm hoping to cash everybody some tickets today. Um, <laughs> I do like Phoenix here. Stevie against the Spurs. And I know, I think we just saw this matchup not too long ago. Yeah, a couple games ago, a couple days ago, excuse me. But teams against the Spurs right now, man, Spurs aren't playing a whole lot of defense. Um, You know, you're getting Devin Booker 8,900 with some upside here. I like this spot from him. If it stays close, he's fine. Beal is fine if it still stays close. You know, Durant's 9,300. The price keeps coming down. Um, so, I, you know, I, I like these guys probably more separately than together, Stevie. But still, I still think it's a good spot against the Spurs. Either the big three could slap, go off here. Yeah, it's a great spot. Um, I mean, if this game stays remote and close, we could see huge games from Booker, Durant, or Beal. So I'm with you attacking that. Um, slow start for Yale, but they're, they're scoring now, Will. We got a five-point game. So, yeah. Um, the 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 preview or review of Nashville we're paying off here hopefully so uh going to San Antonio I mean Wimby matters for the entire slate not just for this team um Wimby plays uh, this game potentially stays close Wimby has some upside here Wimby out I mean we're potentially getting 
some really solid value here. Um, I mean, these two teams just played in Phoenix on Saturday, and that's the game that Wimby left early. Phoenix ended up cruising in that one. Um, what are we doing here with the Spurs with and without Wimby? Uh, with Wimby, it's probably just Wimby. Um, without Wimby, if you think it stays close, then Devin, Devin Vassell's got to be like on your short list of candidates for this team. Um, just at, uh, at the top end because he's he's one of their only other top end plays in terms of price. I think Zach Collins at 5K is probably going to become a guy like he probably played 30 minutes here at 5K. I think people would be interested, but outside of that, Stevie, I don't, I don't think I'd be thrilled about playing any Spurs if Wimby's out. Yeah, I mean, when you when you take Wimby off the floor, Keldon. Uh, he gets the biggest bump in usage um, production wise. I mean, not a huge bump really to anybody outside of like, you know, the guys that, that don't play a ton of minutes. Vassell um, has the biggest bump in that aspect, but him and him and Keldon kind of split the usage a little bit. So, uh, I mean, if Wimby's out, uh, I don't even know if I trust like Zach Collins to play like a full allotment of minutes. Um, so, We'll see what happens here with Wimby if he plays or not. If Wimby plays, interested in Wimby. If he's out, I'll probably sprinkle in Vassell and, and Johnson. I, I think if Wimby's out, Keldon Johnson at 5,400 is just too cheap not to have some exposure to him here. Washington at Chicago, 226 and a half total here. Chicago, 10 and a half point favorite. Uh, Colaby, Tyus, Kuzma, Amari, Shamit out, pool questionable. Levine and Williams, the only two out here for Chicago, will go Washington first. Whole team's out, but, but, but Bagley returned. He played 16 minutes on Saturday um, after missing, I think it was like eight or nine games. Don't know if we expect him to get a minutes bump here, but 5,600, if we don't get any kind of news, I might be willing to roll the dice. <laughs> Yeah, and I guess if he plays the minutes, then that's going to cut into Rashawn Holmes' minutes right. somehow. Um, it might be good to just roll the dice on both of them, Steve. I, I still think if Holmes gets close to 30 minutes at 4,800, I think he's still a good play. Uh, Jordan Poole continues to get this questionable tag now, um, but he did play in the previous matchup against Toronto, had a good game. Yeah, but that was – it was a hip. They said he sprained his ankle on Saturday. Yeah. So I, I don't know. Like it's, yeah. I mean, and he can sit, they're not going anywhere. So, uh, Denny Avdi actually may be okay in this spot. If he gets upper thirties minutes, um, you know, Corey Kispert is another guy's been playing big minutes. Um, he's 5,500. I don't, I think I like him more than Hauser because of the minutes, but not maybe the upside. I think Hauser may actually have more upside, but, uh, neither here nor there. We've already got, you know, we already know uh, Kyle Kuzma's going to sit. So, to be honest with you, Stephen, the more I think about it, Bagley and Holmes may just play anyway because of the yeah. Kuzma situation. I, I think they're both in play. Yeah, I mean, okay. If Jordan Poole plays, his usage goes through the roof. His production goes through the roof. Play Jordan Poole. Um, if Jordan pulls out, then it becomes so interesting. Um, Denny Advia, even at 7,200, I think would be a top-end play if Jordan Poole ends up missing this game. I think you could play a little bit of Advia anyway. Uh, yeah, I mean, as far as like the bagley home situation, uh, yeah, Vooch definitely, and then Drummond. Um, so I want to see if we get any kind of announcement on like what they're planning on doing with Bagley, but I think both centers here, are very interesting plays. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, we were playing Champagne there for a little while. That really wasn't working out. Uh, I mean, I think the minutes are really going to be Kispert, Pool, Advia, one of the bigs, and then pretty spread out after that. So I don't know how much I trust that. Uh, I liked your Kispert call there at 5,500. I don't mind him. Chicago, we love attacking Washington. What are your thoughts here on Chicago? Yeah, one of the best spots of the night, um, Stevie. You know, we know that uh, Kobe White is back. So 
you know, Ayo Basumu was played out of his mind, Stevie, with uh, Kobe White out. But now I think he's a little bit too expensive. The guys that I don't think are too expensive are definitely DeMar DeRozan and definitely Nikola Vucevic. I know they're in the mid-AK range, but all squads aren't created equal. And I definitely think DeRozan and uh, and Vucevic are some guys that we can get involved with. Now, um, you know, one other guy that I do like on the cheap end, and you mentioned him kind of in passing here, Andre Drummond at 4,800. Um, if we can get him to mid twenties minutes somehow, Stevie, in this spot, he's a great tournament play. Uh, just because of the situation, if for some reason, um, Jordan Poole sits. My anticipation is that Chicago is going to blow Washington out, which could lead could lead to Drummond getting a few extra minutes on the back end. And if that's the case, I mean, five to six extra minutes on Andre Drummond could be a gold mine. So I love him today. So I think. Everything you said is, is spot on. Um, I just wanted to say that in tournaments, I think AU is very interesting if he's going to be overlooked on this slate. Like Kobe White coming back, AU is still going to play 35 plus minutes if this game stays close. Um, and he's still a guy that can produce even with Kobe White on the floor. So, um, yeah, I mean, Caruso potentially coming back, or yeah, he's probable too. So, I think AU goes overlooked because of the price increase, but if this game stays close, I think he has upside um, with or without Kobe White. So I kind of still like this spot for AU. Plus, chat knows he's my boy. Let, let's go. I mean, he's my dude. Portland at Houston, 216.5 total in this one. Houston, a 9.5 point favorite. Eight and questionable, Brogdon out, Grant doubtful, Sharp out, Simmons questionable, Tybal questionable, Williams out, and then on Houston, Eason, Sangoon, and Whitmore remain out. Go Portland here first. What are your thoughts here on the Trailblazers? Well, I think if eight and six, and I think there's going to be a lot of interest in Duop Reese had another one of those weird big performances against Denver in limited playing time, 26 minutes. And he'll probably play something similar against Houston, so I, I definitely think he would be in play. Uh, Delano Banta continues to play Stevie, uh, but the price is caught up. Can't really play him, I don't think, at 5,900. I just want to call that out because I know people have been interested in him. Uh, Scoot Henderson, back-to-back 30-plus -back fantasy point performances, Stevie. 5,400, 5,700, now 6,100. Just like that after some big performances down the stretch. Playing against Houston, who's still a little shorthanded, I don't hate that price for him if everybody's out. But I need Simons out. I need Aiton out. I mean, I, I, I need Grant out, which I think, yeah, I need all those guys out, Stevie, which Grant is doubtful, so he's most likely not going to play. But I need all those guys out for me to have real interest in Scoot at 6,100. But if they are, I, ha I have real interest here in him for sure. But definitely Duop Reed, I think, is, is going to be a favorite from the Portland Trailblazers. Yeah, if some of these question marks start getting ruled in, I don't have a ton of interest in Portland here. If we get all these guys out again, Scoot, like you mentioned, Banton, Reith, I mean, they're all really solid plays. And then the other one I wanted to mention was Kamara. Um, if these guys are out, like he he played big minutes the other day, um, and I would expect him to play big minutes again. Chris Murray keeps playing big minutes, 4,300 for him. On the Houston side of things, um, I'm reading um, Jabari Smith out for this game, or is he back? Did I miss that on the injury report? Is he suspended for this game? Um, it, yeah. yeah, he's suspended for this game. So yeah. there you go. Um, yeah, I mean, I think our, I think our boy – Where's Yeezy? Yeezy's not in chat. I think our boy Jock Landell is going to have to play some minutes in this game, Will. Um, I, I mean, obviously, Green. yeah, I mean, they could, sure. Um, I just, I, I hope that Landell is the guy that gets the minutes bump in this one. Yeah, he, he should definitely get the minutes, but um, these coaches do some interesting things sometimes. Jalen Green up to 8,800 now, Steve. I mean, he's been playing out of his mind. Don't get me wrong. 8,800 in a spot where, to me, this is this might be closer to a blowout decision for me, Stevie, or or, or personnel's blowout decision. Like, if everybody sits from Portland, 
I feel like Houston should be able to win this game. They're going to have more talent. Uh, they're at home. I may not be as interested in Jalen Green. If all these guys are in, I'm probably more interested because I feel like Portland can keep up and push the envelope uh, just a touch. So, But still, Jalen Green would be one of my favorites. Um, I think I think, and then Landale and Jeff Green uh, would be my, my second two in after him. Yeah, what's, what's funny about Portland is like even with a lot of these guys out recently, they've been doing a really good job of keeping games close. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I feel like on the Houston side, gosh, I, I mean, it could even be like Thompson playing 35 minutes here. I would love that. Thompson would get a huge bump too. Okay, I didn't even think about this. When when Sangoon was out before and Jabari and Thompson were playing together a lot, they were rebounding at a huge clip together. With Sangoon already out, Smith suspended. Thompson could be a rebounding machine in this game. Um, I, I'm going to go check his prop. I'm so interested in his prop now. I think this is a good spot for Amon Thompson. Jalen Green always in play. Um, sorry, I'm getting distracted. Rebounds. Thompson at nine and a half. Oh gosh, they that's so tempting for me. I might bet the over on that. I haven't decided, but I might bet the over on that. Dallas at Utah. I think this is the Ooh. game everyone's gonna kind of have circled here. Uh 234 and a half total. Dallas eight point favorite. Josh Green out, Cleaver questionable. Clarkson questionable, Dunn out, Lofton questionable, Mark and questionable, Yurt seven questionable. Um, go into Dallas here first. What are your thoughts on the maps? Give me Luca. Um, he, he's the main guy, Stevie. I'm not really too concerned about anyone else, even Kyrie. Kyrie's going to have some games where he pops, Stevie. Um, but the consistency of Luca, and that's why Dallas is such an easy team. You plug Luca in if you want exposure, you let it ride. Um, and that, that's what I think I'm going to do. Luke, Luca only. I, I'm okay passing on everyone else. Yeah, I love Luca in this spot. I think in large field tournaments, you can take shots on Gafford. Um, it's a good, I mean, it's a good spot. It, it's just, mm -hmm. it comes down to like minutes usually, but Gafford, he's been playing great. Um, just absolutely playing fantastic. Kyrie's too expensive with Luca on the floor. Yeah, Luca and Luca and Gafford for me. And then on Utah side, <laughs> I have no idea. Um, as much as it pains me to keep getting burned by Keontae George, I think I'll probably end up getting burned by him again in this spot. Um, I like this spot for him. If this game stays close, I think Sexton is going to have to have a big game. If Markinen ends up missing this game, I think you could play Kessler at 5,400 here. What are your thoughts on the Jazz? Uh, Jazz, great team to target. Uh, against bad team to try to pick players from. Uh, I'm yeah. with you on Kessler though. At 5400, if he gets close to 30 minutes, Stevie, that's practically 30 30 fantasy points. If, if another couple guys just ruled out, Taylor Hendricks is. I think he's okay at 5K, Stevie. I don't like him better than Kessler. Let me say that. But at 5K, you know, if if Marcus is for sure out, like I think that'll open it up a little bit. Uh, just give him a few extra minutes, a few extra opportunities. Uh, if he is out, uh, Bryce Sensible. Oh, the guy that they've been playing, Steve, he's had a couple good games back to back. Um, he, he could also pick up some minutes, but he's not a, the priority for me. Um, I don't I don't think I'm as interested in Sexton uh, with Keontae George playing, but I totally get it um, against Dallas, but it, it should be a back and forth affair. All right, moving on. Last game. I feel like we... Went through that one pretty quick. Um, Memphis at Denver. 214 and a half total. Did we talk about Utah? Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. Okay. I, I was looking something up stats-wise and totally lost my train of thought. Memphis at Denver, 214 and a half total. Denver, 14 and a half point favorite in this game. Bain questionable. Clark doubtful. Kennard out. Contra doubtful. Ja, Rose, Smart. Williams out, Stevens questionable. The biggest news on the slate, I mean, okay, Wimby is pretty big too, but uh, Jokic and Murray questionable. 
Um, awesome, awesome rest spot. We'll see if they actually do it or not. Go to the Memphis side here first. What are your thoughts on Memphis? I don't want to play anybody from Memphis if Denver's fully healthy. Um, if Denver's not fully healthy and, you know, maybe I play Scottie Pippen Jr. if all these guys sit, but they've got to sit, Stevie. Like they, they can't they can't have a 35-man rotation. All these guys have to sit um, for me to, to get to Scottie Pippen Jr., but I think he'll be fine if given the opportunity. Uh, Santi Alderman is, is starting to flash some upside here down the stretch. Um, but once again, these are all, these, this is all speculation. If Denver's full of strength, I'm not playing anyone for Memphis. Yeah, if Jokic and Murray said it's a huge bump to play in some of these Memphis guys. Um, so that is where I would get some exposure. My favorite play would be Pittman. Um, at least 30 fantasy points in four of his last five games he's played. I know he was out there for a little while. Um I, I like Pittman. I, I like him regardless of who plays and who doesn't. I think he gets minutes regardless. Um, so, yeah, but the rest of this team, I mean, you you wonder, like, if Jordan Goodwin's going to play or not and how they've been doing this whole situation. I don't know. Memphis is a mess. Uh, I think you can play some GG Jackson if Murray and Jokic end up sitting here. If Bain comes back... I don't know if I'd play Triple J at this price point, but if Bane's out, maybe you could play Triple J. On the Denver side of this game, if Jokic and Murray play, I'm out on the whole team. If Jokic and Murray sit, Michael Porter Jr., Aaron Gordon, Reggie Jackson, um, DeAndre Jordan, they would all be, would be in play for me here. Yeah, absolutely. Those would be the guys. And Stevie, once again, you know DeAndre Jordan, he got 20 minutes, Stevie. Went from 3K to 4,500, just like that. Come on, guys. What are we doing? Um, but at any rate, definitely one of my favorites would be Reggie Jackson. If Jokic and Murray sit, and I think that's the caveat, they both have to sit. If this team, Once again, this team is fully healthy, uh, Stevie. I'm mostly scratching this whole game off and uh, not even investing in it. If Jokic and Murray both sit here, I think Christian Braun is in play as well. Really cheap play. All right, let's play the morning grind game, and then uh, then we'll get out of here. Favorite play under 5K to go 7X. Who do you got? Oh, man. This is this is a slightly tough one today, Stevie, because I do think um, we have some options. So uh, I probably should have written it down. But believe it or not, I'm going to go with old man Jeff Green uh, for Houston facing the Portland Trailblazers. I think he gets there. Yeah, I don't mind that. Um, I think a lot of these Portland players are going to sit. Give me Tamalani Kamara here at 4,500. Over 8K to go under 5X. Who's your bust today? DeJounte Murray at 9,800. Yeah, he's, he's been playing great. Um, he's been playing great. Really, really tough spot against Boston. I'm going to go Kyrie. Uh, I think Luka is going to have a big game. I think Kyrie is just too expensive with Luka on the floor. Favorite 6X play here? Um, I'm, I'm rolling this on the anticipation that Mobley sits. Um, give me Karras the Vert at 7,400. Should have a monster day against Charlotte. I like that. I'm going to go back to one of the first games we talked about here. I, I really like this guy today. Give me Nick Claxton um, for a 6X performance. I think he's going to have I think he's going to have a big game today. Um, I think a big game is in the works for Claxton today. Uh, let's get weird GPP play of the day. Who do you got for us? Well, Stevie, I don't know um, how weird this is per se because he, he – I think he's going to get ownership, but uh, give me DeMar DeRozan at 8,200. I don't think that's weird enough against Washington, though. Yeah, I mean, I don't hate it. Um, it could be weird. You never know. Yeah. yeah. It's 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 nine games, so I'm thinking he's not going to have, like, any type of crazy ownership. Not DeMar. Yeah, I'm going to go. I don't know if this guy's going to be weird or not, um, but I, I like Pittman Jr. here for Memphis. Uh, it's a tough spot against Denver. Minutes are kind of down. I 
projection wise, I don't think he'll pop in projections. So kind of hoping that like his um, ownership stays down. So I, I like this spot here um, for Pittman Jr. Uh, going to the betting portion of the show, any player props or pick and plays that you like here? Oh, man, Stevie. Let's see. One second. Got to pull it up. Come on, computer. It's my fault, too, Stevie. Like, I should have already had this ready to go, knowing that, uh, you know, we ha- we'd we have this going in this game today. Um, Come on, buddy. I don't think they've given it to – oh, wait a minute. I think they have. I think they have. Man, they went up. I wanted to take Bradley Beal more than five and a half assists. Uh, he's been really good. Give me um, – give me the Bulls minus ten and a half. Already up to 12 and a half on certain books, Stevie. You can still get minus 10 and a half on bet 365. All right. Don't hate it. Uh, I like Claxton over 24 and a half points and rebounds today. Love this spot for him going up against Toronto. Toronto, one of the worst teams in the NBA right now. The injuries have just crushed them. Claxton is a guy that should get his minutes in this spot in general. Um, his minutes over 30 minutes in three of his last four games. So, Really like this spot after a really tough matchup against the Knicks on Saturday. Claxton bounces back here with a big game in this phenomenal matchup. So, like Claxton, over 24 and a half points and rebounds. Also, like Brooklyn, minus five and a half. I don't know if you necessarily want to parlay this or not, do a little single game in par game, but single game parlay. Sorry, I can't speak, but um, I bet them separately for what it's worth. Uh, but I like Brooklyn. Minus five and a half in this game. Toronto's awful right now. Um, they've lost 10 straight. They're one of the worst teams. Like, they're overall, if you just look at Toronto, they're worse in like almost everything over the last 10 games. Um, so it, it's just a team you want to pick on right now. Um, sorry to all the Raptor fans out there as a Magic fan and as a Hornets fan. We feel you. We've been oh, there. Yeah. Um, Jeez. But yeah, their their net rating right now is just it's awful. Um, so I'm going to pick on Toronto and take Brooklyn minus five and a half here on the road. Will any final thoughts before we get out of here? Negative, my brother. Uh, glad to come on and and do this show with you, and and we will meet again soon at the end of the week. Yeah, talk some baseball. Um, oh man, yeah, can't wait. Uh, really looking forward to opening day on Thursday. We're back tomorrow talking hoops don't know if there'll be a youtube show tomorrow or not for what it's worth i'm pretty sure that the nba schedule is really small tomorrow um yeah tuesday there's only four games so there probably won't be a youtube show tomorrow it'll probably just be the podcast form but back on youtube on wednesday for a huge slate and then uh, baseball on thursday so hope everyone has a fantastic monday back tomorrow good luck everyone we'll see you then